Let's talk about Tor.com, which is putting out some of the best science fiction and fantasy stories of any publisher that I have been reading for the last couple of years. Now, in this video, I have 13 recommendations for you. There's actually a few more than that because for the series, I only included the first in the series. But the thing that I love about Tor.com is that they publish a lot of shorter books, so like novella length books. And I think this is so great. I am a big fan of the novella. And if you are looking for novella recommendations, this video is going to be for you. Now, if you don't know who Tor.com are, they are an imprint of Tor, which is a publishing company, which is owned by Macmillan Publishing, which is one of the big five companies. One of the coolest things about Tor.com is that their like vision or mission, the like about page on their website, uh, explains that they're an imprint that is dedicated to providing authors a space where they can tell engaging, interesting stories in the number of words that they want. So not being sort of shackled by the trends or the, like, not the trends, but the, the norms of like, if you're going to write a novel, a fantasy novel, it has to be X number of words. Um, and I think that's why we see there's so many novellas being put out by them because they aren't as concerned about having that like really long fantasy book or long sci-fi book. So the reason that I'm making this recommendation video now and not sometime in the future is that this month there's actually a readathon happening called Tor.comathon hosted by um, beautifully bookish Bethany and I'm gonna link the info down below. There is a uh, like bingo card and that kind of thing. So if you are interested, that readathon is taking place from April 16th to the 23rd of this year, 2022. Um, so you can use this recommendation list to help you try and fill out that bingo board if you want. I have read all of the books on this list and I enjoyed all of them um, at least enough to think that they're good enough to recommend, if that makes sense. Like these aren't all five star reads. I've sort of included all of the Tor.com books that I would recommend to my friends, to you. So now let's start off with some of the recommendations. So I've kind of categorized these a little bit because like I said, I have so many. We're going to start with standalones. And the first standalone that I want to mention is Remote Control by Nnedi Okorafor. This is sci-fi and we are following a young girl who acquires the ability to kill with touch and uh, she is traveling across her country and she is all alone because of course if you kill someone when you touch them like how can you form relationships and it is just this really interesting story of isolation and community and um, all kinds of just really deep themes in this book that I really, really enjoyed. I think when you talk about sci-fi, this kind of book maybe doesn't come to mind as much because this is very like near future soft sci-fi. There is sort of like an extraterrestrial alien element to it and an, an alien artifact, um, but it's left very much to like your imagination um, in terms of like who the aliens are and what the artifact is and, and what it's actually doing. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I don't read a ton of sci-fi. I really, really enjoyed this book. Uh, it is really hard to read. Like there are lots of uh, trigger warnings. So make sure you look those up if you are going to pick this one up. Now, the next book that I want to recommend is also a novella. In fact, like most of these are. So maybe I'll just say novella instead of book when I go through this list. But the next one is The Black God's Drums by P. Jelly Clark. Uh, this is a really interesting alternate history steampunk-esque story, the way that P. Jelly Clark does steampunk, which I love. Um, we are following this uh, sort of teenage girl who wants to get out of the city where she is, I believe it's New Orleans, and um, she wants to leave on an airship. And so she finds out this piece of information of something that's happening and she thinks that she can sort of trade it for passage aboard this, this notorious airship um, that she knows about. And knowing this piece of information and sharing it with the captain of the ship leads to this really interesting adventure story. And in this, we have a totally different um, imagining of the southern United States and the like Caribbean kind of region um, in the I think it's the 1800s um, so like slavery is discussed in this uh, we have 
I think New Orleans is considered like a freed city, so um, it's not part of the U.S. and um, th there's no more colonial powers in the Caribbean. So a very interesting different take on um, the history of the U.S. And, and how that sort of all plays out. My next one was one of my favorite books of 2021, and this is The Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in Water by Zen Cho. Yes, I own a copy because I love this book so much. It is another novella. This, we are following a group of uh, bandits, mercenaries, warriors. Um, they are on this mission, and at the start of the book, they're in this tea house or coffee house, and some trouble sort of breaks out, and they pick up or end up sort of being followed by this woman who used to be a nun and she just sort of gets in the way of everything that they try to do throughout the rest of the book. I absolutely love this book. It deals with questions about gender identity and uh, also just like how do we reconcile our current selves with our past selves, like especially when you've like, you know, like the former nun, that element, right? Like her past life with her current life. Um, and there are other characters who are also grappling with that question. And I just absolutely adore this book. It has a very unique voice. Um, it feels, it is wuxia fantasy. Um, so it feels like a sort of like Asian martial arts movie, uh, which honestly I've, I've not really watched a lot of those, but maybe it's like what my, my mind imagines one of those movies would be like, like a Jackie Chan or there's probably better examples again like I don't really watch TV so I don't know what I'm talking about but it has just this really really fun dynamic group of individuals and I just loved this book I actually really I should reread it because I loved it that much so the last book that is a standalone that's not a new release because I put those in a separate category um, is Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey and I will say this one only got three stars when I read it it wasn't my favorite book um, but that was mainly because I didn't really buy into the relationships that it presented. Like they were just too insta-love for me. Um, but this follows a character who is a runaway. So we're in a dystopian future that feels very much like the Old West, which was another thing that I didn't particularly love about this book. Um, but we have sort of like a fascist government controlling, everything is controlled. And there is this group of women who are traveling librarians that go from one town to the other and they're supposed to be spreading like the propaganda for the state but they are rebels they are um you know they they print seditious materials they print their own propaganda for counter propaganda to what the government wants them to be sort of handing out and so this woman who is running away um from a an arranged marriage um, ends up with this group of librarians and has to sort of go along with them and, and she discovers all kinds of things about herself and these other women and like that the world that she has been raised to understand is maybe not the way that the world actually is. So now let's talk about some series. There's quite a few books on this list actually. Some of the series I have read like in their entirety up to what has been published like and is already out and they might still be continuing on. Others of these series I have only read the first book. I will tell you the information accordingly. Um, but let's start with another favorite of mine, and this is the Murderbot Diaries series. So the first book is All Systems Red. I have actually read this whole series. Um, it's mostly novellas. There is one full-length novel that is book number five in the series, and it is called Network Effect. It can be read as a standalone if you don't love novellas, but I think there is something to be said about reading all of the novellas leading up to it and the first four novellas can be read almost like as a novel. I don't know if there a bi there's a bind up out there or anything like that. Anyhow, if you haven't heard of Murderbot, you're missing out. So Murderbot is a security bot and it is owned by this company that rents it out for organizations, corporations that are doing like research or mining or other things on these different planets in the universe where they might need security. And uh, so this sec bot, murder bot, uh, is not supposed to have free will. It's supposed to have this thing called a governing module, but murder bot has actually managed to hack its governor module and regain free will. So it can make decisions for itself. It calls itself murder bot because there is this like weird niggling memory that it has um, about murdering humans. And the first four books really deal with it trying to like 
figure out its past and its history, but also figuring out its like current feelings now having free will because it knows it's not human. Um, it is a like machine human hybrid kind of thing. Like it does have some like human parts, but it's really not human. It doesn't call itself human. And so, yeah, the first four books were really looking at that like struggle of like, what is humanhood and what does Murderbot want? And I, I just love this series. I think honestly that the first book, All Systems Red, is the best in the series. And then my other two favorite are the full length novel, Network Effect, and the most recent novella, which is Fugitive, to, to, blah, 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 fugitive Telemetry. Um, so, I mean, take that as you will. You can read <laughs> these all in their entirety. I feel like the first four you can read together. Network Effect can be read on its own. And honestly, Fugitive Telemetry could probably be read on its own as a standalone as well. Like, you won't know all of the, like, nuances and things that are kind of, like, coming up from the past, but you could if you really wanted to. But just, like, read the whole series because I think it's a great series. All right, now let's move on to the next series that I have read in its entirety that I will recommend. And this is the Binti Trilogy, three novellas written by Nnedi Okorafor. We are following Binti. She is this um, young girl who wants to go to university off-planet. Uh, to Umsa University, which is like the the universe's most renowned university where people from all over come. Um, and in her culture, people don't leave home. Like that's not done. And she decides to go against that and leave home. And this series, we, we follow her. The first book is her getting to the university and there's like horrible things that happen on the way and trauma that she has to deal with and then the second book she actually comes home from university the second book is called home so it's not a spoiler to say that's what happens and then the third book um she's dealing with the ramifications of what it meant to go and then come home and sort of like figure out where her place actually is with her people now i didn't mention with remote control uh by nettie Corfor, the other book on this list by her but um both that and this series, they are Afro-futuristic. So they are uh, set in um, future countries in Africa. And uh, I think that that's a really fun, um, different kind of world building and different cultural heritage and things like that that can just be super enjoyable for uh, folks who maybe don't read a lot of that kind of thing. And if you're not sure if you would like that, trying out a novella can be a really good way to sort of get a taste of it. And the Binti trilogy can be read as like a book if you just read all three novellas together. Um, but they are technically separate novellas. They've been released at different times. Now we're getting into the series that I have not read all of them or like they haven't all been published, like just the first book in the series is published. So first is the Dead Jin Universe. Uh, this is also P. Jelly Clark. And I have read uh, the short stories and um, The Haunting of Tramcar 015, but I have not read The Master of Jin, which is the full length book in this series. Now, Tramcar 015 is an amazing novella. I actually bought a copy. I'm gonna hold it up again because I loved this so much. So this is, uh, so the, the premise is that we have this ministry and I can't remember what it's called, Ministry of Alchemy Enchantments and Supernatural Entities. Um, so in the different stories, we have different sort of agents of this ministry that are kind of dealing with different like supernatural problems. Um, this is alternate history or sort of pseudo steampunk, modern steampunk, new steampunk, third wave steampunk, however you want to call it. Um, so we are in Cairo in the, I think it's like the 1910s, um, but Cairo is liberated from colonizers. It is in control of its own affairs thanks to the help of a powerful being called a jinn who like helped liberate them by giving them magic. Now in this particular novella we are following a duo of agents for this ministry as they try to deal with the haunting of a tram car and I loved how this book built the main character into this stereotype of like um, men who haven't got a clue about what it is to be a woman or the like things that women 
have to face that are different than men and then he breaks it down and he has this main character going on this journey to like understand um, what it's like to be a woman in this city at this time. There's uh, like a subplot about like suffragettes who are trying to get the vote um, and like you have this great mystery because they're trying to figure out what is haunting the tram car and how to get rid of the tram car. So there's like a lot going on in this little book that I, I really, really, really enjoyed. And I will say the first time I read it, like the first... I don't know, 30, 40 pages, I was like, why is P. Jelly Clark writing this stereotypical man, like with all the like misogyny and everything built in? And I was so mad because I had already read The Black God's Drums, but don't worry, there's like a reason he's doing that. Now, the next series is the Monk and Robot series. So the first book is A Psalm for the Wild Built. This is by Becky Chambers. Lots of people have heard of this. Uh, basically, we have this um, monk who uh, has a midlife crisis, Sibling Dex is their name, and they become a tea monk and they travel around the countryside uh, serving tea and helping people with their problems, kind of like a tea therapist in a way. And while they're traveling um, one night around their sort of camp, this robot comes out of the woods and is like, what do humans want? And this is weird because in this world, which I think is technically sci-fi because this is like a different planet, um, robots like have disappeared into the woods a few generations ago um, after there being some issues in terms of like mistreatment from humans. So they like abandoned humanity and took off to the woods. And now this robot has come forward and like wants to know what's going on with humans. And sibling Dex and the robot go on this like I don't want to call it an adventure because it's really not an adventure, more like a pilgrimage together. Um, and both sort of are figuring out, mostly sibling decks is sort of fig figuring out like where they are in life and dealing with that sort of like midlife crisis, if you will. This is Hope Punk. It didn't work super well for me just because I think it was a little bit too peppy and too upbeat and too hopeful for me, but lots of people love it. I think Becky Chambers has a really great writing style, so definitely worth checking out. All right, I just sneezed, so don't mind my red nose, but we're gonna forge ahead here, and the final series that I want to talk about is the Littenverse series by Nino... Kipri, I think is the author's name, or how that's how you pronounce it, and the first book in this series is called Finna, and I wasn't sure that I was gonna include this one on this list. This one didn't work as great for me as many of the other books on this list, but I think it's a really interesting concept and I think there is an audience for it. So in this book, we are following these two people who work at essentially the equivalent of an Ikea and um, they're in a relationship and uh, they end up breaking up and they both go into work and it just so happens that on the day that they've broken up and they've both been forced to work together uh, that a portal opens in the store where they work and a woman goes missing and they are the two employees that are selected to go through the portal to find this missing woman and um, if you can imagine a portal appearing in an Ikea I absolutely can it's the kind of place that they, it just they're like weird weird spaces um, and I really loved that aspect of this book. I think the reason I didn't love this book as much was that it was very heavy-handed on its sort of like anti-capitalist messaging and then I don't know it also just felt like very much a Gen Z book and I don't say that to be like pejorative but I am a millennial. I come from a different time. I remember the world before there were computers and internet and all of that kind of thing so Take that with a grain of salt. That's just my opinion. Um, I think this book definitely has potential for people to really, really enjoy it. And there is a second one, which I haven't read. So let's finish this video off with talking about some new releases that just came out in 2022 that I think are great. And I think you should pick up if you can get your hands on, obviously, since they're newer they might not be available at your library or they might be more expensive, that kind of thing, but I wanted to include them. So the first is Servant Mage by Kate Elliott. This I have a full review for on my channel. I will link it down below. Um, we are following a mage who is basically, she's indentured, so enslaved, and she doesn't have a lot of choices. And one day while she is working, uh, this group shows up and are like, hey, if you come with us and help us overthrow the current government, like we will get you out of this place. And she as a fire mage is needed for this mission that they're on and she agrees to go with them. Now, the thing that I loved about this is Kate Elliott takes all of the sort of like things we take for granted in fantasy and sort of turns them on their head. And the main character in this just 
has her own agenda throughout the whole book and I just absolutely love that about her. Uh, the ending was the weakest part about this novella. I think Kate Elliott is not used to writing novellas and I think definitely this was one of those cases where the ending didn't feel as complete as many of the other novellas on this list. Then we have Comeuppance Served Cold by Marion Deeds, one of my favorite books of the year so far. This one is about a woman who is a con artist. This is set in 1920s Seattle but with magic and so she is a con artist who has magic at her fingertips and she is trying to steal something from this very powerful family in Seattle and uh, we follow her sort of antics of like setting up this long con to gain access to the family home and I loved this book uh, novella again so short and sweet I would read a whole series of these I really hope Marion Deeds writes more of them. I don't know if that's the plan at this point, but uh, I love a good heist book and I loved the setting in this, like having the 1920s Seattle with magic. We had like magical liquor and speakeasies. There was also like uh, shapeshifters and lots of different kinds of magic in this book. Just really, really enjoyable, really fun, quick, great read. Finally, for novellas, we have Spear by Nicola Griffiths. This is the most recent book that I have read on this list, and this is my favorite of 2022 so far. It is mythic fiction. It is a an Arthurian retelling. Um, we are following this girl who grows up with her mother in a cave in this hidden valley. They're hiding from something. Her mother is very paranoid, and she... Uh, here's this calling <laughs> to go to this lake and over time she just can't stay in the wilderness and one day she encounters these knights and she decides she's going to leave and go and go to the court of Carleon and this is like Camelot and she's going to meet the king and become one of his companions become a knight and it's just a really fabulous fabulous book. I thought the way it was written was so beautiful. It, it read like a ballad. I really loved how queerness was just centered in this and felt so it felt modern at the same time as timeless and it, it being mythic fiction it has that wonderful distant storytelling voice which I really really love though I know not everybody does. So absolutely great. I'm gonna have a review for it coming out later this month because the book hasn't even released yet. So again that's why I've included these in a separate list but if you can pre-order it or try and get your library to buy it. Like, absolutely do that. Now, the final thing I want to talk about, final book, is actually a full-length novel, and that is Battle of the Linguist Mages by Scott O'Moore. This is science fiction, science fiction fantasy, um, however you want to kind of label it. We are in um, California. I think it's in San Francisco. I've forgotten now. I read this back in December or January. And we have um, this main character who her life is kind of a mess. She spends way too much time playing video games. There's this like immersive virtual reality game that she plays called Sparkle Dungeon and she is the queen of Sparkle Dungeon. She is the top of the leaderboard. She is amazingly good at it. And she gets hired by the company who does like PR for the game uh, to like play test some stuff and it turns out that the game has been teaching her how to use power morphemes which are um, dense units of language which essentially means that she can use language to change reality and then it turns out that there's like this cabal of people who are able to use this power and there is this existential threat coming towards earth and all kinds of crazy stuff that like when I ex try to explain it it sounds insane and like it wouldn't work but I absolutely adored this book I think it's a really fun really weird really wacky <laughs> story and I just absolutely loved the main character. She is very snarky and like some people might find her annoying but I that didn't bother me. I thought it fit with her character and her arc and her story and she had a lot of growth in this book which I always love to see. So that is it for the recommendations and that is it for this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you are thinking of doing Tor.com-a-thon this month um, or if you've read anything from Tor.com that I haven't mentioned that you would recommend because my next video is going to be my plans for what I'm actually going to read for the week of um, which obviously will be things that aren't on this list because I haven't read them before. So stay tuned for that video. Thank you for hanging out with me. As always, go read a book.